U.S. Interior Secretary Ken Salazar joining us right now to talk about the administration's plan to split the oil drilling agency. Uh, Secretary, good to have you with us here on Street Smart. Um, talk to us about why this decision. Did you guys determine that there really was a conflict by having these two uh, together? Independence is a key. Uh, the uh, MMS uh, inspectors have to have independence from the revenue collection parts of what the agency does. And so it's important uh, that when we're dealing with uh, matters of police powers, which basically are safety and environmental enforcement, that we have absolute independence from uh, those functions of the agency that bring in revenue to the government. And I just want to remind everybody what's going on in terms of, uh, 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 Mr. Secretary, uh, is that the Minerals Management Service is going to be split into separate oversight of rig safety from oil leasing. Um, and this is in response to the explosion. I mean, is, are you kind of conceding that because they were together that maybe some oversight uh, was missed here because of that relationship, because of having it all uh, under one roof, if you will? Yeah, I think the problems uh, that have occurred in the Gulf and this spill are at the feet of BP and a number of other companies that were involved. Uh, it was supposed to be the safest uh, program in the world. And so the investigations that are underway, and there are many of them, um, will get to the root cause of, uh, of what happened here. Uh, on a going forward basis, it seems to me that just having independence in terms of uh, the enforcement mechanisms of the agency and the revenue raising parts of the agency is really important. This uh, agency brings in on average of about $13 billion a year to the United States Treasury. It's the American citizen's resource that is uh, developed by oil and gas companies, and it's that money that ultimately uh, is important uh, for, the, for the Treasury of the United States. But, but as uh, that money is raised, we need to make sure that we also have the right enforcement for safety and environmental compliance. Yeah, but, you know, the idea, Mr. Secretary, is that uh, they were raising so much money and then looking the other way on certain safety issues uh, in order to, to, to continue raking in that cash. I mean, there were certain safety measures that are, are necessary uh, to drill for oil in other countries. Brazil and Sweden, for example, require remote-controlled blowout preventers. Uh, uh, even though we have looked at those in the U.S., they are not required here. Do you think it's because uh, those those two, uh, well, now what will be split into two uh, institutions shouldn't have been together in one regulator? You know, we have uh, the National Academy of Sciences and uh, the National Academy of Engineers all taking a look at what happened. And when we get to those root causes, uh, we'll take whatever actions have to be taken. The bottom line is that we will not allow another oil and gas well to be drilled unless uh, we can be confident that uh, all the safety measures are there and that uh, they are being enforced. And uh, this is a, a time for us where we're very focused on uh, dealing with the issues at the, at, in the Gulf. We have an evolving problem there. Uh, the president uh, has asked us to be fully engaged in it, and uh, we're doing everything we can to stop the leak and to protect uh, the precious natural resources of, of the Gulf. At the same time, we need to understand energy is important for the security of this country, and uh, if we are going to develop it as we will, we need to make sure that it's being done in the most uh, safe and responsible way. Secretary Salazar, let me ask you, and I know you've been kind of working at some of these issues, but I think some might ask why it's taken so long to separate um, these two divisions, if you will, or separate out these two businesses, because it's not the first time that the agency has come under fire in terms of its relationship with the energy uh, industry. It, it happened in 2008, also going back to 2006. So why has it taken so long? You know, you're, it, it's taken uh, time. Uh, these problems have been uh, with the agency for a long time. We have come in and we have uh, started with a new direction uh, in this agency, including uh, moving forward with uh, development of uh, offshore renewable energy resources like wind energy. We're doing a lot in terms of uh, reforming royalty collections within the agency. And this is uh, something that we have been working on. In fact, last September, we commissioned an independent press set of eyes to come in and take a look at all these safety issues. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are making changes and uh, are moving forward uh, as fast as we can. I wonder, you know, you say the ultimate responsibility lies at the feet of BP. Uh, is that basically the official decree here? I mean, after all, Transocean owned that rig, and Transocean has had a history uh, of problems like this, or at least more problems like this than other rig operators. Uh, let me say, there are a number of different uh, companies that have some responsibility here. It's B BP uh, as the operator, Transocean drilling uh, the, the, the well, uh, Halliburton with the cementing, uh, Cameron with the blowout prevention device, and who knows what else. But that all will come uh, in due course. Uh, what I know is clear now 
is that uh, BP has said that they will uh, make sure that they are going to be responsible for everything. That includes all the spill response costs that are being incurred today, the natural resource damages uh, that will be uh, accruing, as well as any damages uh, to people along the Gulf. Uh, what uh, BP has communicated to people is they want to win the hearts and minds of uh, the people of the Gulf. Uh, we're going to hold them accountable to doing that, and uh, we won't uh, rest until we have uh, the, the situation under control and we have the, the Gulf Coast uh, and uh, its environment restored. Secretary Salazar, let me ask you, I mean, some have pointed out, I mean, you're never going to make this 100 percent accident proof. I mean, you're drilling way below the ocean surface, uh, very deep down. I mean, safe to say that there are going to be accidents because of just the conditions surrounding uh, what's going on when you do offshore drilling. You know, there, there will always be some risk, uh, but just like in space exploration, uh, when the Challenger blew up, uh, we didn't stop uh, moving forward with uh, space exploration. Uh, this uh, incident here should uh, never have happened because there were a number of safe, uh, uh, fail-safe devices and a whole host of uh, redundancies, multiple redundancies that had been built into the system. And so it was not supposed to have happened, but it did happen. And so what we need to make sure we do going forward is that we have uh, the safest mechanisms in the world and that uh, this problem never happens again. Uh, that's our mission. All right. Secretary Ken Salazar, thank you so much for finding some time for us. We do appreciate it. Thank you.